I wanted to begin with some very beautiful words um, from Homi Bhabha, um, who, who said in the location of culture, the beyond is neither a new horizon nor a leaving behind of the past. Beginnings and endings may be the sustaining myths of the middle years, but in the fantasy eclat, we find ourselves in the moment of transit, where space and time cross to produce complex figures of difference and identity, past and present, inside and outside, inclusion and exclusion. To, to bring this a little bit within the context of this conference, which I've been fortunately attending, so I can actually refer a little bit. Uh, I want to, to start the discussion asking the question, when an existing form, uh, and in this, in this morning I, I speak particularly of Bhaganathan because this is the form that I have known, I do know and I continue to follow even though my own work uh, has moved away from this. I ask, when the existing form has under, started to undergo a series of transformations, which is true of any oral tradition, I think, up to what stage do we still call it by the name of the root form? Um, just to, uh, to give a small example, um, having studied the Pandanalur style um, uh, right from the late 70s, I know that what I see today, for example, uh, with no disrespect in the performances of senior upholders of this style like Alarmel Valli, have for me very little to do with those original Jatis and Tirmanams. Uh, and this I say not with any judgment, but I want to just point out the fact that the tradition has never been static. And I think it's it's each individual artist who has always interpreted uh, and found their own artistic definitions um, of these forms. And similarly, when we start to talk about dance itself, um, how do we define dance? Um, the last time, um, a couple of years ago, I, I was projecting some of my work uh, in a forum in Kalakshetra, and at the end of it, uh, a lady sat up in the audience and she said, but this is not dance. Um, and this is something that we're hearing a lot uh, in this country especially. Um, which brings me to the question, how do we define dance? Is, is dance only to be defined through existing uh, forms that we can recognize from the past? Um, I think that we can define dance for ourselves uh, in very subjective ways. Uh, and for today I wrote a few of the ways I define dance. For me, dance is merely one strategy to preserve the wholeness of the body, the sanity of the mind. Dance is a technique of energizing the space around the body, the space between bodies. Dance has the possibility to stop time, to make time flow. Dance is moving image. So essentially what I would like to, to say at this stage before I project, hopefully the projection is working. I wanted to make, a, to have a visual reference. Uh, but essentially what I'm saying is today, how important is it um, for us as appreciators and watchers of dance to categorize? Uh, for instance, um, the other day when I was sitting in the, in the panel of uh, the media discussion, we talked about if I've known and if I can um, watch Bhardanatyam with knowledge, does this mean I cannot watch Manipuri uh, and assess 
what this form is actually doing for the body. And at the end of the day, I think we're all working with the common instrument of body. And the parameters for looking, for watching dance work, I think must at this stage go far beyond, but is it Bharatanatyam or is it not? Is it dance or is it not? Is it Indian or is it not? Uh, because I think that when we talk about dance, there are many things that we can still look for. For instance, we can look for uh, the dancer's ability to extend spine, the dancer's ability to, uh, to charge space uh, between herself and the audience, the dancer's ability to create strong graphic visual on the stage. Um, and I think that the only way we can start any sort of discussion when today one is confronted with so much difference in work is that we can actually start to look and not to already come with uh, conditioning and cliched ideas of what should be and what shouldn't be done. Um, so at this point I think I would really like to project 10 minutes um, from a piece that I premiered in 2006 in Korea. The work is called Pushed. And just before I, I show you the work, I'd just like to read from the writing of Katja Werner, a German dance writer, who wrote about my work, how to perform the pure shape of a movement, how to make its essence visible, or, uh, or um, particular formal um, positions for myself. But it's over the years, I've started to think of it more in terms of very distilled concepts, that I st still think separate my work from the body of contemporary work that people have been evolving in the West. Um, I don't know if the projection is starting anymore, but I wanted to project something from uh, the next work I did that I premiered in July. Um, and I wrote, at the time of creating the work, I wrote, when I created my first work in 1994, I did it simply to create a dance that would be expressive. I saw dance as an expression of the self. In 2000, with fragility, I thought dance would change the world that simply by creating a radical performance, people's perceptions of India would change, that in the world of art, equality was a possibility. And now, with my cynicism, in 2008 I wrote, I don't think one can fight the big battles of culture, identity, or politics through dance. The beauty of small, simple, unwasteful things. I want to be economic and precise, to create a beautiful thing, and, and I titled the last work I created, Beautiful Thing One, also as a way to, I think, reclaim beauty in a sense, uh, because I know if one looks at the whole history of, of creation of contemporary work uh, globally, uh, beauty had, for a time, beauty was not allowed. Uh, and for me, it was very important to be able to relook at beauty with a new sense of aesthetic. 